Last lesson we looked at uh, the definition of place. We're now going to look at how places aren't always perceived by people in the same way and different factors might alter how you perceive certain places. I looked at the North Atlantic um, last lesson briefly and we talked about how it might be a space, how it might be um, one of those areas where there isn't really a meaning attached to it. Um, for example, if you're going on holiday to America, you would cross the North Atlantic, but it doesn't really mean anything else to you. It's just a location. However, one person's space could be another pe person's place, and it depends on how you perceive it. So example I've given here is that the North Atlantic is an actual place for fishermen and people that uh, run cargo ships. It's because that's where they get their source of employment. Um, you look at NATO. NATO is an organization where it is pre protecting uh, interests in North America and in Europe. So the North Atlantic is a really key location for them. So that all depends on perception. I'm now going to look at kind of factors that might alter different um, elements of perception. So one factor that might alter how you perceive a place could be your age. Um, here's an example of a play park. Depending on your age, you might see this as a place for fun. For example, if you're a child um, under five, you play see this as a place of excitement and somewhere that you would use for entertainment. If you would see it as um, if you're a parent, so uh, someone in their 30s and 40s perhaps, you might see this as a place um, that's useful. So it's a place for you to take your kids to to have them exercise and have some fun. But for example, for a teenager, it might be just an area to um, hang out in and kind of cause trouble in. It might not be an area that they actually really like. If a, people that are older who prefer peace and quiet, it might be an area that they actually dislike. So the age really does affect how you perceive this place and, and how you attach meaning to it. Uh, and that can obviously change with time. Similarly, um, people go through what we call a life cycle. So as you go through a life cycle, your role changes. So your role is that you can be uh, different things. So you can be a student, you can be a brother, you can be um, a teacher. You have different roles that you kind of take on in your life. That will change as you as you get older. Um, when you're younger, you might want to live um, in, a, in the top area in an, a lovely urban centre where there's lots of entertainment and gigs and parties to go to. But as you're, you get older and your age changes, but also as your role changes, say you became a parent, you might actually not want to live in a, um, an urban city centre because you'd see it as crowded you'd see it as polluted, and you might want to live in an area that has got less pollution, more space. That's if you become older and you become a more, want more of a quiet existence. Um, but also if your role changes, if you become a parent or you become a young professional who's got a bit more money, you might want a bit more space and you maybe want a bit more kind of, um, kind of low density in your housing. That is, again, how your perception of place changes as your age and potentially your role changes over time. Alongside age, gender is an important thing to consider when thinking about place. So I've got pictures here of a, a traditional 1950s housewife and a 1950s um, a male employee who's working in office. So we, at times, have had very traditional ideas of what would we call a female place, uh, which would have been the idea of domestic women working in a kitchen and working at home and male places which would have been out in the public sphere. So things like offices and factories. So we sometimes have divided what we think is a male and a female place um, along the lines of gender. And this can actually uh, affect how we um, perceive places um, now. So, for example, here's an example of a football stadium. Um, it, you can see from this picture that there's basically only men in this picture. So it could be perceived to be a male-only place, or a male-dominant place at least. Therefore, um, you, if you are a, a woman, um, you might perceive this as a place that isn't really welcoming, isn't a safe place to be, um, and therefore 
it would be seen as a male oriented place and that is along the lines of perception of gender similarly um, gender along with other factors like age can also play into what we call the geographies of fear so here is a really dark alley um, it's not a very welcoming place but your gender might alter or exaggerate how you feel about this um, if you're a woman, perhaps you might see this as a place that is a really high risk place because public spaces for women are largely can be associated with more abuse. Um, they could be associated with more actual kind of sexual violence. So this could be an area where something like rape could occur or you could be assaulted, where if you are coming from a male perception, you might not have um, the same kind of uh, perception of this place. You might still see it as not a very nice, intimidating place, but you might not have that kind of what we call a geography of fear where you fear and maybe you might even avoid this kind of place um, because of the perception that you have of it as a dangerous place. Another factor that would alter how you perceive and use a place would be your sexuality. Um, here's an example of Brighton. Uh, we can see Pride Festival going on. This is a celebration of the... Um, LGBTQ plus uh, community um, and this is because this is where um, people of that community have actually um, clustered and because it's become an area where they have um, for whatever reason um, drawn to it becomes an area that it becomes generally over time welcoming to that community therefore this becomes a safe place for people um, of those sexualities and therefore um, we can therefore see that businesses grow up there and it draws people in and it's a place where people can be accepted it's the opposite of that last slide where we looked at the geographies of fear this is the geographies of acceptance this is where people feel like they can be who they want to be and and so it's a place that draws in people and for um, in terms of sexuality it can be a place that people perceive well Here's a couple of actual examples apart from Brighton, Hebton Bridge. It looks like a Victorian um, mill town, but it's actually a community that is very supportive of the lesbian community and has been called the lesbian capital of the UK. Um, and Castro District in San Francisco. This is a place that actually the gay community became so influential that they got local gay politicians actually elected. And so it became a very, very important place, not just for a perceived safe place but a place of political importance for um, that community um, we also can consider in these places once they become places that are um, perceived to be uh, meaningful important but also safe that people obviously start businesses up there um, you get lots of um, LGBT tourists who go to actually feel safe and accepted in these places and therefore we get the growth of uh, money in these areas and uh, because it's the LGBT community it's been coined the phrase of the growth of the pink pound so um, that's just one of the benefits of um, a place being perceived in a certain way it can actually draw in business and and kind of make economic economic opportunity uh, the last two slides look at um, religion uh, and ethnicity so religion again is if you are of a certain religion, you might perceive a place to be of more importance than if you're not religion. Here's a picture of Jerusalem. This is a really important place for different religious groups, um, both people of Christian faith, um, people that are Jewish and people that are of um, Islamic faith. And there are various reasons um, why there are certain um particular buildings in there that have certain importance and it's actually because all three religions have this importance of it they actually contest this space they they're contesting that it's more important to their religion to somewhere else and it's actually the obviously the the site of the crusades where different um religious groups were fighting over it for um, a long 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 period of time so we can see that um where you have sometimes two groups um, perceive places slightly differently you can have um, uh, contested elements to it and Jerusalem is a really good example of that. Uh, the last slide here is just an example to say that we could also consider ethnicity so if you are a minority ethnicity perhaps in um, in a community you might 
want to, a bit like the kind of gay community, you might want to actually cluster together for security because you might have similarities in language or culture. And sometimes if you get a large community in one area, you get it called a ghetto. I've given an example of um, Chinatown in London is where people, Chinese immigrants, would have clustered together literally out of kind of a sense of security initially. But then that would have grown into a really bustling community. And so that's where we can see that they've created a safe space for themselves. And, and they might see, therefore, that... Um, depending on your ethnicity, certain places would be safe. And if you're away from that community and in an area where you are again, felt like a minority, you might find other places to be unsafe, perceive them to be um, kind of dangerous or in that geographies of fear.